Welcome to Unofficial ACI Guide. This is Jody. Today we're going to be looking at establishing Layer 2 connectivity from a traditional network into ACI. Let's take a look. All right, folks. Well, welcome. We're going to be looking at Layer 2 connectivity uh, in ACI and what that means. Uh, we'll talk about migration and Layer 3 connectivity a little bit later. But what we're looking at right now is just how is it that we get a trunk from an external device like a Catalyst 9000, attach it to ACI, and see that Layer 2 connectivity is still going on. So as you can see here on the drawing, uh, MAMLS 31, it's that green square to the far left. It's a Catalyst 9500. We're, we're simulating a, a, like a data center core device uh, or data, data center distribution device where you've got Layer 2 connectivity. We've got a VPC connected to this. So, uh, Luis, can you hop into the DC core device and show us what the configuration on that looks like, and then we'll hop into ACI and look at it from that perspective. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jody. So, first, we want to go to, as you see in the drawing, MAMO Steady 1, MAMO Steady 2 are connected to Leaf, Boro, and Palmer via VPC. So, uh, let me dig in into MAMO Steady 1. And show VP neighbor. Uh, we see have interface mm, ten one zero one ten one zero two. So we show feature channel summary, and we use import. Uh, 10.01 and 10.102. So we do show interface 10.101 and 10.102. In this case, as you see, Jody, we permitting pretty much everything, any VLAN. Right. So it's so if you do a show interface trunk, I mean that's that's every VLAN you've got configured on mm. this on this Catalyst 9500 switch is going to be allowed. So that. That's how we're doing it, at least in the, the Catalyst world, the traditional world. Even if this is a Nexus, it would look very much the same. Um, so yeah. how, how do we allow, how are we allowing the the VLANs, which equal an endpoint group in ACI, how are we allowing those inside of ACI? Absolutely. So mm, first thing we call, let's go to the ACI. Um we're going to go to the um, uh, application profile and to the APG in this case, let's use net one hundred. Okay. Um we're gonna first of all um uh, we're gonna go to uh, the in this case we're gonna the domain which is a physical. Okay. And then we're gonna do a study ports. Okay. So basically, uh, to give you an example, uh, let's let's pretend this is not here. So let's just say let's gonna add a VPC going to um, a, one of the catalysts. Right? So we do a deploy study port, and we're gonna select this case VPC, and we're gonna go and select let's say VPC to uh, this person this catalyst, right? V Sorry, close that. VPC Carlos Nile, Carlos One VPC, and then we select the the end cap, the VLAN as you mentioned. I personally final immediate, and okay. and in this case now you can say on tag. Edit to one P or trunk. In this case, we're going to use trunk and then submit. I don't want to submit because it's already there. Right. And but that's the trunk is basically that's that's the tag, that's the trunk, that's the same thing we're used to seeing. Exactly. exactly. Okay. And so it's important to note that in in ACI that per EPG, which an EPG equals kind of a VLAN, right? That the EPG, we're doing that dot one Q tag of 100 for net 101, net 102, 103. Those are VLANs 101, 102, 103 on the outside of ACI. So for every EPG that we are um, creating, if we want connectivity, layer two connectivity uh, for that, for your devices outside uh, to migrate them into ACI, 
you need these static path bindings for these bare metal devices like uh, servers, whether it's another switch. You're adding these static port, uh, uh, path bindings that Luis has shown to allow that, can, that layer two connectivity between ACI and the external switch. So we've already got these path bindings configured. Can you show us, uh, Luis, if you, can you show us the operational tab and show us what we're seeing from a layer two perspective? Absolutely. So we go to the EPG 100, Net 100 in this case, and then we go to Policy Operational. Uh, we can see all the sparring port. Okay. Yeah, here they are. Here they are. So, and also the servers attached via uh, uh, the V Center as well. Okay. And so I can see, can you, uh, can you go over to the interface column there to the right and let us see what's on the, uh, kind of bring that out a little bit so we can see that interface a little bit better? I'm sorry, yeah, sure. Okay, so you can see there, yeah, if, uh, yeah, there you go, I'll let you manipulate that. Yeah, so. The endpoint you mean, or the in the? I, I just want to be able to see the interfaces. Um, uh, if you could bring that column over where we can see the oh, yeah, 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 text in that interface. Here it is. Put it over here. Easy. Here we go. There we go. So what we're seeing here is that all the endpoints are, except for, for that there are a couple of ES. ESX hosts, which are directly on the fabric, but there are a good deal of devices that live outside the fabric that are coming in and known by the CAT 9K. You can see that by the VPC, right? So we've got endpoints that live outside the fabric that are communicating via layer two across uh, to the fabric. So from a bridge domain perspective, uh, Luis, what configuration do we have that supports, uh, do, do you recommend um, for that bridge domain if we're doing uh, layer two connectivity outside of the fabric. Are there any special configurations that you typically do or, or, or recommend? Absolutely. So since we are um, out, since the device outside the fabric, are we, let me go back to the map, to the diagram. So this is the devices, which is a aspiring port, a traffic generator port. Mm -hmm. It's actually connect the, uh, to the catalyst. So the config done in this case, um, so to support that, so we're gonna go to the networking tab, bridge domain. I'm gonna go to the bridge domain for this particular RPG. And I'm gonna go to L3. So you see, we got the uh, flow, the floor enable for- right for the L3. So since the L3 is actually in the ACI right now, the, uh, the default gateway is in the, in the ACI. So the, the, for the devices to ARP, they need to, the floating needs to be turned on. Okay. Yes, and this, this really, this or mimics what we have in um, in Ethernet segments out of, outside of ACI. So if, uh, in traditional networking, ARP is always flooded, right? There's not an option in ACI. Obviously, we have the ability to not flood ARPs, to not flood unknown unicast and, and things like that. So we are just mimicking what the external environment looks like. So it's generally best practice, I think, that if, if you have a, a connection from ACI to an external device at layer two, like another switch, uh, enable the flood, ensure that you don't have any problems with that. Once those connections are severed, you don't have the layer two connectivity anymore, you can enable hardware proxy, you can disable art flooding and stuff like that and, and, and save some, save the devices in your broadcast domain a little bit of time of processing uh, by eliminating some of that. But uh, all right, um, the, so you showed us the uh, what the operational tab on the EPG looks like. You showed us what that looks like in the GUI. Uh, what are the ways can we look at uh, if we want to figure out where endpoints in, in are in a particular VLAN? 
what, what other opportunities or options do we have with maybe the APIC or the LEAFs to figure out where the endpoints are at? Absolutely. So we can go to the LEAF, right? Um, let's say in this case, let's go back to the diagram to see. So we we can go to Parmer or Borrow. Let's go to Parmer, right? So we go to Parmer. Um, Parmer's over here. Um, we can say show um, endpoint. And we can see all the endpoints, right? So let's say uh -huh. you want to see show endpoint VLAN 100. Guess what, Jody? You, you won't get anything. Hey, where did they go? <laughs> yeah, good question. Uh, the reason is because VLAN, VLAN 100, for in this case, is a it's an internal VLAN for the ACI. So what we need to do is show VLAN, um, VLAN extend it. Uh, it will translate that VLAN. So VLAN 100 actually is VLAN 16. Okay. There's so, the EPG, gotcha. Exactly, so if you do show endpoint, Belong 16. Here's your endpoints. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Now, if we log into the APIC, I know that we can also look at the a the endpoints from the APIC perspective because the APIC has it's got all the keys to the kingdom. It knows where everything is at, right? We're seeing that via the GUI. So I know there's a way on the CLI of the yeah. APIC to look at some of these as well, right? Absolutely, we can go to the APEC and take a look. And we're going to go to SSH, 198, 18, 61, admin, and the super password, Cisco. Show endpoint VLAN 100. Let's see what happens. Here they are. Hey, looky there. Mm -hmm. So, for those keeping track at home, that was uh, we're using the NCAP VLAN, and that works from ACI. And ACI is is doing it's just doing an API call to get this information back. So. Same thing in the GUI. The GUI is just a uh, curtain for API calls that we're doing. But uh, we're doing the uh, an API call from the CLI for NCAP VLAN 100, and you see it's learned. You see the IP address. You see the node it's attached to, the interface um, policy group that, that's being used, the whole nine yards. So, okay, very cool. Well, yeah, Louise, yeah. thank you so, so much uh, for, for showing us. This has been very informative. Uh, thank you, Jody. I appreciate it. You got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching the video today. If you'd like more ACI how-tos, design guides, and best practices, check us out on the web at unofficialaciguide.com or on YouTube.